And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Hungarosaurus, which was a request from Irrigator via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Hungarosaurus was a nodosaurid ankylosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Western Hungary. It looks similar to other nodosaurs if you think of dinosaurs like Boreal Pelta. It walked on all fours, low to the ground. It had a long tail, a small head. Its body was covered in armor, the osteoderms. It also had spikes on the back and around the hips. And being a nodosaur, it didn't have a club at the end of the tail. It was estimated to be up to 13 to 16 feet, or 4 to 4.8 meters long. The skull is estimated to be 12 and a half to about 14 inches, or 32 to 36 centimeters long. And it's estimated to weigh between over 1,400 to over 1,500 pounds, or about 650 to 688 kilograms. That's very specific. Yeah. Much smaller than, say, 74 tons. <laughs> or even an ankylosaurus. <laughs> Hungarosaurus had a slender upper arm or humerus that was long. It was about 18 inches or 45 and a half centimeters long. The type species is Hungarosaurus tormai. It was named in 2005 by Attila Osi. The genus name means Hungarian lizard. And the species name is in honor of Andras Torma, who found the fossils. And those fossils were found in 2000. Four individuals were found at first, and they were together. Oh, we've got a four theme going on in addition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lots of four types of the same dinosaur found together at first. I can't think of any other ankylosaur where they found four of them together. Mm. Because the conventional wisdom is that ankylosaurs were sort of loners. And that's why we keep finding them isolated alone. It's really cool that they found a group of them. Yeah. And then later, the fifth skeleton was found. <laughs> what? So. <laughs> well, the holotype is at in the collections now at the Hungarian Natural History Museum in Budapest, which you mentioned, Garrett. We we were there a few years ago. Yeah, it's a, several, quite a few at this point. <laughs> quite a few, yeah, I didn't want to do the math, but I remember liking the museum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of cool displays. Plus, I think it might be the, well, it's the only place I can think of where you can see Hungarosaurus. Yeah, I haven't seen it anywhere else that I can think of. They have 450 bones of the holotype that have been found. It includes parts of the skull and jaw, neck vertebrae, back and tail vertebrae, tendon fragments, ribs, parts of the shoulder and hand, part of the pelvis, and more than 100 osteoderms. It's a lot of osteoderms. Oh, yeah. Makes sense, I guess, if your body's covered in them. Yeah. And that's just the holotype, not all four to five individuals. Yeah. And then, like I said, there was a fifth skeleton and some isolated bones later found and described, too. And those isolated bones were from the skulls of juveniles. Oh, cool. There is another nodosaur, also known from Hungary, Struthiosaurus. But Hungarosaurus was found to be different from it because there's differences in the skull. And it seems that Hungarosaurus is more derived than Struthiosaurus. Farther down the family tree. Mm-hmm. A study in 2021 looked at the skull ornamentation of Hungarosaurus and found three different sizes, which they interpreted as representing different growth stages. They weren't allowed to do histology on the bones. Mm. There doesn't seem to be any osteoderms on the skulls. All the fossils had rough texturing on the premaxilla and nasal and a sharp crest-like ridge on the postorbital behind the eye. They found some variation that seemed to correlate with growth, like the skulls look different depending on their size and presumed age. They found that the pattern of the ornamentation also changes as Hungarosaurus got larger. The smallest premaxilla, the front of the jaw, was about half the size of the holotype, so they thought that came from a juvenile or subadult. And the smallest fossils studied had these deep, large pits and grooves as ornamentation. On the larger fossils, the ornamentation was quote-unquote slightly irregular with less pitting and it had shallow holes. So it's possible that there's some variation between the individuals, or maybe it's the way the bones fossilized, or maybe even sexual dimorphism, but that's hard to know for sure. That makes me wonder, like we were saying, how they were usually loners. If all but one of them are babies, mm -hmm. maybe it's just a parent and it's babies. <laughs> maybe. It's so hard to know. Or it's larger offspring, but they might be one family unit, I guess. In terms of what Hungarosaurus ate, a study in 2022 of Hungarosaurus teeth found that it probably ate soft vegetation based on tooth wear. They also compared it to Maquodon's teeth, which wore down more. And it's possible that Hungarosaurus ate flowering plants. 
It was an herbivore for sure. And it was a low browser. It ate food that was about 3.3 feet or one meters off the ground. They estimated that it formed teeth within between 63 to 126 days, averaging 94 days. Meaning that was a continuous cycle, not when it was about 94 days old. Mm -hmm. Every 94 days it was getting new teeth. (laughs) Yes. So many new teeth. Yeah. (laughs) Gerasaurus lived in a floodplain environment, and other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include Pneumataraptor, a small peravian theropod, the Rhabdodontid, Machlodon, Abelosaurs, sauropods, and birds. And other animals that lived around the same time and place include fish, amphibians, crocodiliforms, turtles, and pterosaurs. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 